Once they saw, they understood what had been told to them concerning this child. All who heard of it were astonished at the report given by them. Many treasured all these things and reflected on them, and their Mary treasured all these things and reflected on them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen in accord with what they had been told. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord Jesus Christ. Again, there's a whole series of meanings in these readings. I, I would really like, while you're here, that you can sort of absorb what goes on around you and allow it to influence your understanding. But I'll give you just one example. In the first reading, we talk about the root, the shoot that comes from the root of Jesse. That's a reference to the olive tree. The people who live in this land know that the olive tree never dies. The olive tree will always come back to life. If you have a drought for 20 years, an olive tree will stop producing olives, then it'll stop producing leaves, it'll stop producing anything. You go by and spit on it, and it's going to sprout. The olive tree has a knack for being able to preserve itself. And that's why, for instance, you notice the age of the trees today. Olive trees simply don't die. They go on and they go on and they go on. And God was reminding Israel that it doesn't matter how it looks. Israel cannot end. Same thing with God's holy people. God's people simply cannot end. That's because of something that's a part of God's people themselves. There are times when we prosper and there are times when we wither, but ending is not in the picture. Simply can't happen. But remember, it's the olive tree they're referring to. Second thing, you notice the reading concentrates on peace and then talks about a little child. Um, I think one of the curious experiences that many of us have had is um, to watch two children in the neighborhood get in a fight and the parents sort of break up the fight and that sort of thing. And you find the two kids playing together in the afternoon as though absolutely nothing has happened. But 10 years later, when you move, the parents are still not talking to one another. <laughs> it is one of the things of children. Children have an ability to make peace. And the scripture is calling us to that, that Jesus in, will for his entire life, like a child, lead people to peace. Children are very successful at making peace. When you get to the Gospel account, one of the major things the Gospel authors are doing, and it's, it's something to understand because it permeates the Gospels, the Gospel authors have the understanding that God calls people where they are. We saw that with regards to uh, Simon Peter, for instance, with fishing. Uh, it was a big thing with Matthew when he was collecting taxes. Uh, you notice that it's the Magi whose job it is to study the stars in the Persian society. And they encounter the Lord as they're studying the sky. And we look at the shepherds and they will encounter the Lord while they're taking care of the sheep. One of the great dangers in uh, human life is that you and I think we encounter God when we take time off from what we're supposed to be doing. So, you know, we have a great day. We work really hard all day. And by God, we get an hour to ourselves. And we sit and pray, and we think that's when God comes to us. That is not it. He never comes to anyone resting, never has, flat out. God always comes to people in the midst of their work. There was an entire document in the Second Vatican Council to remind priests of that, that God, you will not encounter God on retreat. You'll encounter God in ministry, this whole thing of what goes on. And I think another part of the shepherd deal, and the thing that I would like to concentrate on is the idea of God's respecting of traditions. Again, you have to understand the whole background, but one of the things with regards to Judaism is that when you are a Jewish family in a village and everyone knows you're, you're there, the birth of your first child is a monumental event for the entire town because it, first of all, proves the fertility of the family and the idea of carrying on the name and when the first child is born, the entire town will come to your house and sing. And they serenade you the day the child is born. Well, in Jesus' case, it was God who got them away from their house. It was the plan of God that made them be here when the child was born. 
So God had the responsibility to provide the choir, and he did. That's the reason the angels sing. The angels sing because that's part of a Jewish birth. They are here at a place where that can't happen, so God takes care of it. Another thing, we are between the city of Bethlehem and the city of Jerusalem. The land in there was for raising of the sheep for sacrifice in the temple. According to Jewish law, nothing could be sacrificed in the temple that wasn't absolutely perfect. So if you brought a lamb for sacrifice and there was anything wrong with it, it would be examined by the priest. You would exchange it for one of these other lambs at a price, I might point out. But you would exchange it for one of these other lambs because you could not sacrifice anything that was damaged in any way. I've told you about how sh stupid the sheep are. They're constantly injured. So if you wanted to have really healthy, perfect sheep, you had to raise them practically at your doorstep. So this is the area where they were raised, mainly for sacrifice. <clears throat> if that is true, the first people that God would have to notify when the Lamb of God, the final sacrifice of all of history comes, is the shepherds. It is their job to raise the lambs for sacrifice. So when the Lamb of Sacrifice the Lamb of God is born, they need to be told. And so God does. I think one of the most amazing things when you study one of the undertones in Scripture is that the traditions and things that you and I build up over a period of time, God chooses to respect. And I'll give you just one example. When the Scriptures were originally in Hebrew, they described a miracle that took place. And the miracle was one of the kings of Israel who had nine wives and no children. And this went on for a while. He had no children. He got very sick and he was going to die. And God said, I'm going to cure you. And as a sign, a young woman will conceive and bear a child. Now that was a miracle to Hezekiah because he had these wives and no children for a long period of time. He was cured. His wife conceived and bore a child. When the scriptures were translated into Greek in the city of Alexandria, they sat down and as they were going through, the sign given was a young woman would conceive and bear a child. And they looked at that and said, young women are conceiving and bearing children every day. How could that possibly be a miracle? What was probably meant is a virgin will conceive and bear a child. And so that's what they put in the Greek translation. The Greek translation, translation says a virgin will conceive and bear a child. The interesting thing is that came to be believed in the whole world. So when God fulfilled the prophecy, he fulfilled our misunderstanding because we're God's people. I think one of the interesting things about scripture, if you study it very carefully, you and I, I think, take God very seriously. I expect to be judged for my sins. I expect to stand before him in judgment. I expect to follow what he says. I take God very seriously. But one of the amazing things of scripture is he takes you more seriously than you take him.